Hey, it's Brock here with Rock Hill Farms, and today I'm going to make the case that having a nice, well-manicured lawn is a bad thing. And I want to start off by saying that I have no interest in telling anybody else what to do. I just give my thoughts, and it's okay if we disagree. And this is a conversation that may not be very popular, but it's how I really feel, so I'm going to say it. And it's kind of driven as a reaction to some comments that I've been getting on one of my popular videos. So I've got a video where I dug a swale to the pond. Well, I've got a bunch of videos about digging a swale to the pond because I've done it three times running to the pond and once running away from the overflow. But in that video, I said, you know, this these work great once grass grows over them. They said, you better seed that right away. And I said, I'll come in on its own. I said, oh no, weeds will come in on their own. Well, it's the same thing to me. I'd rather have weeds and native grasses across it than a monoculture lawn. And there's several reasons for that. Now, before I get into talking about why I don't want a lawn, I want to make a caveat to this because I don't want to insult anyone. And I want to say that I have a lot of respect for someone who puts in the work dedicates their time and energy to making their lawn look really nice. It shows a certain amount of pride in what you do. It shows your work ethic, and it does look really nice. If you do that, I respect you for it. I'm just explaining why I don't. And I'll also put a caveat in. One reason I don't is because I'm kind of lazy. It is what it is. I'm, and maybe I should say it in another way that I think a lot of us are lazy when it comes to things that we don't prioritize. I will work very hard for something that I think is important. But if I think it's not important, my the amount of energy I'll put into it's really low. And that's probably common for a lot of people. So why do I think it's a bad idea to have a nice lawn? Well, the answer, the short answer, the simple answer is that nowhere in nature will you find a monoculture lawn like what we have here. That's not how nature operates. If you just leave any piece of ground alone, you'll have a thousand different things growing in that area. And it's going to support the natural habitat better. It's better for the soil. It's better for the environment. Monocultures, it just, it just doesn't make any sense. I don't understand why you want it aside from the fact it looks nice, but like what's behind me is just a mix of everything. We've got stretches of our lawn that are full of clover. I like dandelions. Um, dandelions are edible. I'd love to have a yard just full of dandelions. I don't see what the negative to that is. And before I go any further, uh, as far as a manicured lawn, I hate lawn stripes. Am I the only one? There, I'm in... Facebook groups about mowing because I do a lot of mowing. I review mowing products. I used to do mowing as a side business. And a lot of people have a big conversation about how to get good lawn stripes. And I'll tell you, when I drive by a house with a striped lawn, I said, is this the outdoors or a candy land board? Grass doesn't have stripes. So in my opinion, I think it's better for the environment. And that's really not even just my opinion. If you do a search on Type the term, is a monoculture lawn good for the environment? And just see what you get. And that's not even just my opinion. It's more like just a fact that not everybody knows. Go on Google, type in the search bar, is a monoculture lawn good for the environment? And everything that comes up will tell you it is not good for the environment. And there's multiple reasons for that. Just on its own, if you could just get it to grow without doing anything else. It's still bad for the, for the soil, but the steps needed to maintain a monoculture lawn are all bad for the environment. The water, in a lot of areas where we struggle to get good water, it's all being used for, like I heard that in the US, one third of all water used is for watering lawns, which seems impossible. Something that came up on Google, fact check that one if you want, I'm not standing behind that, but a ton of water is used. And that goes into the cost of everyone's water if you're on city water. And it's just a negative using all that water for it. But also, 
you're probably fertilizing and using pesticides and putting chemicals onto your lawn that are only there to try to make it look a certain way. I'm not a fan of that. So there are a lot of people who criticize me for cutting down trees. When I mainly cut down trees that are mature, have lived a full life, are getting close to the end of their life cycle, or are about to start rotting inside, I'll cut them down before that wood goes to waste. If those same people are complaining about me and they're putting pesticides and fertilizers and all kinds of chemicals on their lawn to make an unhealthy lawn, then I think you're barking up the wrong tree. So all of this area back behind me is hay field. And the people who cut my hay, I'm trying to learn about hay, I wanna start cutting my own hay. The people who cut my hay now call this a trash hay because they don't treat it, they don't fertilize it, they don't put anything on it, they just cut whatever grows. And I'd like my yard to be the same as that field except a little shorter. That's my opinion on it. And it's rare, but it's kind of fun when it turns out the research backs up what I just naturally think about something. There's one more part of this conversation that I haven't brought up yet, and that is time. It takes a lot of time and money to have a nice lawn like that. Just seeding that swale, the, it would have cost two or $300 for grass seed. There's no chance I'm spending that money. And then fertilizer and everything else, zero chance I'm spending that money to have nicer grass. And if you want to, I, do, I don't care. But every bit of money you have, picture it in one pot, and you can spend it in different places. Everything that you spend on your lawn is something you can't spend somewhere else. So you're have, you need to be putting that at a pretty high priority to spend the money on it. The same thing with your time. Someone who works that hard, I, I applaud their work ethic and I say, man, they keep a nice yard. But there's something else that they're not doing. Now that might just be sitting in front of the TV and eating Cheetos, but it also means that they're not you know, out there playing with their kids or whatever else. There's something you're giving up. You're not working on another project or you're not spending time doing a hobby. I guess that is your hobby. So for me, every time I see a nice lawn, I think, man, what else could they have been doing? I also think there's a happy medium because I let mine get pretty rough and I don't do the weed eating often and I let certain patches get overgrown because I haven't cleaned up the mess over there or whatever. So with everything, there's a good happy medium between one extreme and the other, and that's probably where we should all sit. So just a rant video, just my thoughts. I appreciate you taking time to watch this video. I'll put links on the screen to a couple more of our videos, and I'll see you next time.